It's almost like I don't remember who I was before I became Anna Masraya. Because she cured and healed so many things that I have been through, that I have experienced. So she's definitely here to stay. When I'm doing my makeup, I put some incense for a nice smell and good vibes. Ana Masreya means I'm an Egyptian woman in Arabic. I'm gonna give like elegant naked today. It's very earthy colors. Everything is gonna be like brown and like matte and I'm almost gonna give like a nude illusion. I'm not gonna wear my pads or any like boobs. I'm going with like my natural body. I'm gonna give leg. Before I started doing drag I was like reluctant to move my body in like certain ways. I was always very aware of like my mannerisms and like if I was being too feminine or if I was looking too gay or stuff like that. But ever since I did drag I have a completely different relationship with myself and um, with the way I allow myself to move. I, I speak for myself, but I also feel it's a very communal struggle that is understood by queer Arabs and Muslims everywhere, from Egypt and beyond, okay? I grew up very in the closet. I didn't even want to admit to myself that I was gay. You know, in Egypt, there are very defined roles of what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman. And I felt like I had to prove my masculinity to the people who doubted it. I was captain of the wrestling team. I was always so angry. They don't tell you that you can be a boy and you can play with Barbies or that you can be a boy and that you can put on makeup. They don't, they don't let you think that that's okay. Keep in mind, I'm not just a gay person or a queer person, I'm an artist. You know what I mean? And drag is my art and I always, from when I was very young, I think I had a lot of trouble with myself because when I closed my eyes or when I was alone, you know, in the shower or like in the bathroom, there was this woman in the mirror and she would perform. I was her or she was me, but just like an alter ego and I didn't understand that. So first and foremost, I had to understand that. I had to understand what that meant. And it's okay because your eyebrows are what? Sisters, not twins. These might be cousins actually, but we'll see. We've sold a lot of tickets. We're definitely gonna be a full house. Queer Arab culture, you don't have very much of it. Like this show and all my shows, in the very beginning, it started off as like, you know, queer Arabs who were coming and then it expanded beyond that. And now there's like straight Arab men who are coming to this drag show. I tie the Arabness and the queerness and so now they're exposed to like a scene that before they didn't know about or didn't have like any reference to. Again, I just wish my face was already on so I can go party, but I'm nowhere. Um, I need to probably start like speeding up a little bit. Junior year of college, I found out about a show called RuPaul's Drag Race. And I literally looked at it like this. These are mostly men who are dressing up as women, lip singing, putting on makeup, feeling fabulous, wearing heels. This is what I see inside. And I had never seen anything in the media or anything on TV that was like that. How come they can do it and I can't? Queer Arabs and queer Egyptians are here too. We are real tangible 
complex human beings with many different aspects to our identities and our who we are as people. All of this was just a foundation. Now I'm gonna start painting my face. Are you ready? All right. Two big defining factors for me from 2020 were the Black Lives Matter movement and the death of queer Egyptian activist Sara Hagazi and how me being a queer North African, how do I speak up for my African American or my African brothers and sisters? How do I as a queer Arab speak up for people like Sara Hagazi when I a lot of the times feel the same fears and the same anxieties that she faced in her lifetime? <laughs> It's so difficult to exist as a queer Arab person in the Arab world, even here. It's difficult to exist as a queer person. This I will say what I want to say tonight and every other one in the I had a very unique situation where I came out in the New York Times on a very public scale. Before that, you know, I had started telling my friends my very secretly and like only people that I trusted that I was gay and I, you know, I'm living in New York City now and I'm doing this drag show. The amount of positivity and the positive response that I received as a queer person, everyone who I love has supported me, has backed me up, has elevated me to like new levels of success. And I really think that it has to do with the fact that I showcased a bravery that terrified me for so long that when I did that, it's like, oh, she did that. Like, it's crazy. I'm like so tired and we still are gonna switch personalities completely, you know? <laughs> Yeah, Birahtak fully just tell Leila when people are coming in to, to to tell her to tell them where the merch and the raffle tickets are. Okay, okay, I'll tell I'll tell them. I'll okay? Them. Alrighty, bye. So my friends are amazing. My friends have been the ones who make all this happen really. I started going to many more drag shows in real life and seeing drag queens and being like, this is so cool but I don't feel like it completes me. I wanna see a performance by Haifa Wahbi. I wanna see a performance by Nancy Ajram. I wanna see a performance by Elisa. I wanna see the Arab women with the big curly hair and the eyebrows and the polished and the... I need to see the women that I saw on TV growing up. I need to see Shireen. So now I'm getting the queer aspect of things. I'm exposed to those but it's still missing the Arabness that's a huge part of my identity. If I can't see it, it I, I need to make it exist here. And that's sort of where everything started to come together. I'm so proud to be an Egyptian Muslim. Anna Masreya puts together all the the struggles that I faced as a queer person living in Egypt and the beauty of everything that I love about Egypt and Egyptian culture and Egyptian women and Egyptian taunt and she puts them all together. Seeing Anna Masraya in the mirror, I felt like I was seeing a drag that speaks to me. That I was giving myself permission to do all the things that society taught me I couldn't do. And I felt free and empowered and fucking beautiful. <laughs> I'm not used to look like this, baby. Yeah, just practice. I used to do it a lot more in the beginning when I was first starting drag. Like it was still like fun. And I was like, oh my God, I want to paint my face. And I used to come home from work every single day and just like paint my face. And it was so fun. And that's how I learned how to do it. But now it's like, now it's different because it takes a lot of time and I need to look perfect. Back then I didn't care about looking perfect.
I made him that song. You like it? Isn't she pretty? And then I added all these feathers and they're gonna fly with this fan. And I'm gonna put it on before the tape comes out. Tape's coming out. I hope she's not destroyed after tonight. If I get her back home in one piece, then that's great. If not, I'll buy another one. <laughs> no. I want to bend the ideas of gender that I was taught to believe were so rigid. I want to bend them. I want to break them. And I want to show that I can express that woman that I saw inside of me without anything being so binary and clipped and locked in. Hey, Leila. Can I see? Can I see? I think I'm falling in love. And then the fan and the feathers. You see it? Everything about my show, I wanted to feel like I am doing this in the middle of the pyramids. You know what I mean? Like, the, it's authentically Egyptian. It's produced by Egyptians. It's worked on by Egyptians. I miss my home and my country so much that everything that I do is like a love ode to it. Like, I can't believe that I left you, but I left you so that I could be free. And now I'm, I'm doing everything that I'm doing to prove my love for it and to prove how much the country and the culture means to me and how beautiful I find it. It comes from such an innocent place. All the songs that I perform in drag are the songs that my mom would be playing in the car while we're driving from Heliopolis to Maedi or while we're driving from Maedi to Zamalek. So I'm sitting next to her and it's all, it was always the, the female artists. I, I used to question why. Why don't I resonate with these men artists like I resonate with these women? Don't get me wrong, I love the Hashem Abbases and the Amr Diebs of the world. I do, I really do. But I always resonated more with the females. And drag has allowed me to not question, to just be, to just allow. Halas, this is the way it is. This is the way I am. I'm not bound by society's definition of what I have to do. Last time, my most recent show, there was a friend of mine. She stood up on stage. She held the microphone in her hand and she said, I am gay, I am Muslim, and I am Egyptian, and I am no longer scared. There are no words to express the beauty of hearing something like that. Because I know the pain and the struggle of what it takes to say that. And the fact that I've curated a space where people can feel free to be themselves and to own their truths, it's so overwhelmingly beautiful. And I want people around the world to experience that same beauty that we have curated here in New York. Smoking shish.
Keisha, that is fucking my mama. Anna Masreya saved my life in so many different ways. I know that there are some of you out there who may be curious or who may feel like they want to try drag. But you here in my space are allowed to be whoever the f you want to be. And I chose this, I chose the light, I chose to finally break free and just be myself because enough was enough. So is Anna Masreya gonna be around for five years? Yes. She gonna be around for 20 years? Yes. She gonna be around for 50 years? Absolutely. And Anna Masreya allowed me to let it all go.